Nostalgic, yeah. Nos- nicely done. Nostalgic, going back to the memories of I. He did. <clears throat> so I guess Tawfiq, you want to start off, uh, and then I can uh, then uh, pick up where you leave, and then share my screen. Sure. Assalamu alaikum, Bahrain, everybody, and all the ISB and the fraternity of Indian School of Bahrain. It's pleasure to have you here. I can see a lot of alumni. I, I can see the committee uh, members of the Indian School, as well as the teaching community of Indian School, as well as privileged to have Saudagar sir also with us joining in from India. It is a warm welcome all the way from Bahrain. First of all, it's Muharram, the new year. Uh, it, I take this opportunity to wish you all of uh, a blessed year forward uh, with the pandemic around. Uh, today we have the speaker, Safra Saudagar, the co-founder of and director of Clixium. He is the digital marketer and it's a great opportunity to have him with us. Uh, of course, he's been ru- running in Australia, in Melbourne, and he's been uh, hosting a lot of digital marketing tools up to his sleeves. And he's also touched up $20 million in 2019, which is his big accomplishment. And it's a big wow to him for that. Of course, the takeaways from today's session is exploring alternate careers in digital media and, of course, the entrepreneurship, which he is going to talk about. So without much ado, I give the floor to Mr. Safra Saudagar, my brother, my colleague, my friend from the Indian School of Bari, and it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Tawfiq, for that beautiful introduction. Um, <clears throat> hey, everyone. Let me first start by sharing my screen, and then um, we can... Uh, go about it one by one. Um, <clears throat> so thank you, the PWA as well, for the invitation. It is an honor to be here. So, you know, today the topic was entrepreneurship and how ideas are born. Um, but personally, I feel that we're still getting started on that journey. So it's still very early for us to become this big, giant, uh, multi-corporation, global giant sort of thing, right? Um, now, this is a long story that needs to be written in the days to come, whether good or bad. But regardless, I will take the opportunity today to share a few things. Firstly, I'll introduce myself uh, by giving a little bit more detail about me and then our company. And then maybe a few short stories. Uh, these stories have helped to shape our journey. So, hi, my name is Sarfraz. I passed, I passed out from Indian School Bahrain in 1995. Both my parents were teachers in the same school. I am an engineer by education. I have a master's degree in telecommunication. I am also an entrepreneur by occupation. I co-founded Clixium about five years back. And uh, the mission when we first started was where shall we begin from? So I guess the best place to start would be my name. (laughs) So, my name is Sarfraz. Um, I passed out from the Indian school in 1995. Both my parents were teachers in the same school and uh, I am an engineer by occupation. Now I co-founded Clixium about five years back. Our mission was very straightforward um, when we first started our company. And the mission was how can we create great digital experiences for local businesses here in Melbourne. 
In the last five years, we've been able to grow our business where today we manage the digital marketing needs of a wide range of customers. Customers like Australia's largest franchise group. These guys have, have about 2,800 franchisees and span four countries. We also manage the digital marketing needs of Australia's largest pharmacy group. These guys have over 4,000 retail pharmacy customers and 3,000 uh, hospital customers. <clears throat> we also manage the needs for um, one of Australia's fastest growing aged care and healthcare providers and many similar organizations. So we truly feel blessed, mainly because of the impact that we are able to create in the local market, as most of our customers are, consent, are considered essential services. In 2019 alone, we helped our businesses and our clients generate over $20 million worth of revenue. And it would not have been possible without the support of our amazing team. So today, the first story that I'm gonna share is how the actual idea was born. So how I ended up creating a job for myself, doing the things that I do today and doing the things that I love. So for the first story, we'll have to go back seven years in the past to the year 2013. The exact date was around 12th of Feb. It was a hot day in Melbourne and I was wearing a tie. Now, for those of y'all who know me, Tofik, my parents, my family uh, will attest to this. I hate wearing a tie. It is just not my style. So when I first decided to put it on, on Feb 12th, 2013, people instantly knew that I was up to something job interview. So I was about two weeks um, since I first landed in Melbourne on my PR and I was unemployed. Just a quick, quick heads up, a PR stands for permanent resident. It's a type of visa that grants you the ability to stay and work in Australia. And I was going to do whatever it took to make sure that I landed that job interview even if it meant going as far as putting on a tie. So the company that I was interviewing for was a company called, called uh, Mondelez International. Um, so just a quick heads up for those of you all who don't know, Mondelez is the holding company for popular brands like Toblerone, Cadbury, Oreo, et cetera. All of those wonderful snacky things that you see on your screen, that is the holding company that manages that. So the interview itself <clears throat> was in the city. Um, which is not too bad. Um, it was organized by a job consultant. Her name was Smita. And that day, I was to meet someone called Melendi. Um, so I make it to the office ahead of time, and I sit in reception, as everyone would, waiting for my name to be called. In a short while, Melendi comes, says hi. And we go into their office. Now, I don't know what happened, when I walked into her office, maybe I was born with it. Maybe it was Maybelline. <laughs> Regardless, guys, I crushed that interview. At the end of it, the primary person that I was speaking with at that company, Melendi said, Safi, you have really impressed us today. Not only do you have the technical expertise, you are funny and you are enthusiastic. So this is my first first brush with Aussie slang. Now, for those of y'all who don't already know, Australians love to shorten things. For example, service stations become servo. Football is commonly referred to as footy. Track bands is called as trackies. <laughs> Chocolate becomes chockies. Uh, biscuit becomes bicky. And uh, here's a tricky one. Can anyone guess what's chocolate biscuit? It's chocobicky. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is that Safraz, the name that my parents have given me, quickly became Safi in this country. So back to the story now, right? So at this stage, Melendi says, Safi, you've really impressed us today. She further said, Safi, you have ideas exploding out of your head. You have so much vision for our company. Um, she then paused, right? And she paused, paused for an abnormally long period of time. And after what seemed eternity, she said, unfortunately, we're not really looking to hire people like that. So all of those amazing skills that she said that I had, it turns out she wasn't really looking for any of them. Now she obviously could see the, could see the look on my face, right? So she felt the need to explain herself in a little bit more detail. She said, Safi, we are looking for a data analyst. We need someone who can sit at a desk 
and check little boxes on a computer screen to make sure that data is meeting specification. After talking to you for 60 minutes, I could tell that you would hate coming to work every day if this was the job that you had to do. Now, what can I say, guys, right? I was completely gutted. You know what it felt like? Um, us 90 kids over here will relate to this. It felt like someone had given me a double suplex after that gone to the top row, come flying down with a double choke slam. And when I thought it was all over, poked me in the eye with the elbow. It's in WWE quotes there. So now let's come back to the story. <clears throat> so I now realized that Melendi was absolutely right. And it didn't matter how much of tie I would put, no matter would cover up the fact that I did not want to be a data analyst. The thing is, for the longest time that I'd known, I had wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to invent things. I wanted to create new exciting products and exciting services and take them to market. And when I started going out in the real world, searching for jobs, I quickly realized, unfortunately, that entrepreneurial opportunities or jobs that offered growth in that field were very, very far and in between, specifically in Australia. So what do I do? I set my sights lower and lower and lower and lower. And at this point, I'm at the stage where I would have taken up any job that would have offered me a paycheck. So while I didn't leave the Mondelez interview uh, when I spoke with Melendi, I did leave with a new outlook on life. So I didn't get the job, but I did get a new outlook. And the understanding of how important it is to choose a career that I loved. So I combed through my past experience, hoping to find an opportunity that I originally missed, something that I had overlooked. And I did so very quickly. The thing is that before migrating to Australia, I had a great mix of technical and non-technical expertise and experience. And in my last role, I was closely working with a Mr. Shibulal. Now, for those of you all who don't know this already, Mr. Shibulal is one of the co-founders of Infosys. And one of the important things I learned from him is that if things aren't going your way, try a fresh perspective. And I literally did that, guys. So I chopped my resume from being seven pages down to two pages. I took out all of the fancy words, all of the MBA marketing terms that I knew, took them all out and I went back to basics and I kept it simple. In 20 days time, I was now sitting on four job offers and it took the one that offered me the least amount of money, but the most amount of growth. And here they are. The first job offer was at a bank. It's called me bank. The second one was for, was for a construction company, Machines for You. The third one was these guys, Melbourne IT. And finally, there was Jim's group, the company that shaped my future. I ended up accepting the offer at this company. So this company in Australia is a bit like Reliance in India. They've got business interests in a lot of different sectors. So I start my first job and I was working in the digital marketing uh, department and it was a large factory franchise company. I worked really, really hard. I got up at four o'clock in the morning. My younger brother, who's probably on call, used to, used to drop me to the uh, tram stop from there. I used to take a train from there. I used to go to a bus stop and my manager would pick me up. It was early days, right? I was slogging. I worked really, really hard, took initiative, made my mark. Fast forward a few years, I was heading up the department. I was managing a large team. I had a six figure salary. Life was good. Not only was life good, life was great. I had all the perks that came with C-level management. I had a fancy car. Until one fateful Monday, right? Um, now, most organizations have this culture on Monday morning catch-ups. <clears throat> and it was during one of these catch-ups that I was told that my department, the digital marketing department, was going to be downsized. So we were going from a team size of 12 down to six. As anyone would feel, I felt scared, right? Uh, because I too one, one day may lose my job. After all, for large corporations, um, name any corporation in the world, it's always about the bottom line. And I was at a crossroad. From here, I had two options, very straightforward. Look for another job with the chance of this happening all over again, 
or create a job for myself, meaning I would never have to put on a tie for the rest of my life. Naturally, I was leaning towards doing something of my own. So I took this proposition to my work colleagues, who is now my business partner, and I said, what do you feel about this whole idea of going on your own and doing something by ourselves? He immediately said, yes, I'm in, let's do it. So guys, we decided from that day on, we would become digital marketing entrepreneurs. We were extremely happy. Now, most people think that when you start your own company, you hire yourself as CEO and you're on your way. Absolutely not how it worked in my case. I had to interview for this position with my wife. I distinctly remember going home, sitting down with my wife in the kitchen and saying, I have a crazy idea. Instead of getting a job and getting a paycheck, would it be okay if I pursued the option of starting my own digital media and software services company? And before you say no, I just want to remind you of something. You have always said you wanted me to get a job close to home. And if I followed my passion, not only will I live here, I will work from here and we will be together when we will be together forever. I was absolutely shocked at her reaction. She said, husband, you are a position at your life where you're a small part of a big machine. With the skills that you have, I'm more than confident that you will land on your feet if things don't go your way. She further said that you have only things to gain. So as long as I see you working as hard as you can from that kitchen bench top, you are more than welcome to live, stay and work from our house. Guys, I got the job. I was going to be an entrepreneur. I got exactly what I wanted and I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified because my wife had brought up an excellent point. I was only a small part of a big machine, right? I had no business experience, no customers. How in the world was I supposed to start a business from nothing? How can I create something from nothing? The engineer in me said that this equation made absolutely no sense. Despite, despite what my head said, my heart said, go with it anyway. So with absolutely nothing, my business partner and I set out to see what we were made of. After we resigned, served our notice periods, the very first thing we did was talk. Um, we talked to anyone who would listen. I distinctly remember putting on my business suit and we would literally drive around town, get around to meeting any business with a marketing budget. And we demanded that I speak with the person in charge. And a lot of time they demanded that I left. <laughs> so, but every once in a while, someone left me a clue, um, a hint of what to do next. Um, a piece of information, a valuable contact, right? Um, some clue. Um, as to what I should be doing next. So one of the first customers that came on board on the journey was a small swimming pool cleaning uh, business. They came on board after, after having a disastrous experience with their current uh, digital marketing provider. Now, if you guys remember how I said in the previous slides, every now and then someone left us a clue. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to take you through this bit of communication. Now remember, this was our first client in the first week of our business. So we were just one week old and anything that can go wrong did go wrong for us. For starters, can you imagine we got the name of the customer wrong on the invoice? <laughs> so in this email, as you can see, the customer has politely pointed out to us that, hey guys, you got my name wrong on the invoice. You may want to correct it. Next we failed to mention our bank account on the invoice. Imagine sending a customer and you forget to write your bank account. Again, politely pointed out by a customer, right? You're a really nice guy. We were then also advised by the customer that we should be giving them seven days payment terms. <laughs> we had it earlier 30 days. So they wanted to pay us earlier than what we had thought, right? We were learning and we were learning quick. We were moving fast and we were breaking things. Moving on, the customer also said it would be a great idea to add the word Australia to the blurb on the invoice. Let people know that you're local. If 
fantastic advice taken. He further went on to say that we needed a tagline. <laughs> you can see where this is going, right? <laughs> to add insult to injury, the client then proceeds to create a tagline for us. He said, you guys are stupid. Let me create a tagline for you. And then he used the colors in our logo to write a tagline for us, right? And then he sent it to us. This is just one customer, all right? So guys, one week in and we were pushed into the deep by a swimming pool cleaning company. How ironic is that? So they clean swimming pools and they pushed us into the deep end. As you can see, this is a copy of the first invoice that we sent out. I still have this for nostalgic reasons. It is a modest 1,980 per month over a 12 month contract period. The crazy thing over here, if you guys notice, is that A, it doesn't have any bank account details, obviously, and everything else that the customer said, but customers were wanting to pay us over the internet, but we could not accept their money because we did not have a company bank account. And that's how crazy it was. So how did we manage things? Well, sometimes we asked our clients to pay into our personal bank accounts to reconcile later. Sometimes we blamed our accounts person. So it was three months um, of hustling and working really hard before we, before we first managed to save our first $10,000. So three months, we had $10,000 saved. And now we could afford a fancy accounting firm. Mind you, work did not stop. One client led to the next one, which led to the next one and the next one after that. So the great work that we were doing was finally getting noticed. So in 2015, we went 100% on the books. We went legit. We registered a company. We did all the proper paper, paperwork. We paid an extremely large sum of money to an accountancy firm to reconcile all of our previous transactions. It was like constructing a building. You go eight floors up and two floors into the ground at the same time. So we were growing the business and creating foundations all at the same time. Surely, but surely, um, we were getting there. So as we grew, we were starting to also meet more customers. We were getting better at the art of closing large ticket sales deals. So no longer were we dealing with $2,000 a month. We were dealing with tens of 20 of $30,000 a month recurring revenue. We started to find our niche with franchise organizations, right? They seem to love what we do day in and day out, week in and week out. We worked on the business. And what started from my kitchen, went to the spare bedroom, then to the garage, and finally to our first office, and then the second one. We then started to hire the right people who understood the culture of our organization. We quickly let go of those who did not fit with company culture because we're still a startup. We cannot afford to have people on the payroll who didn't quite um, agree or understand with our beliefs. For talent, um, we made deals with universities for the best talent from very specific courses that we found really worked for our sort of clients. We took people um, who truly believed that they wanted to change the world. Then, after carefully listening to what customers said, we started to build our core services model. So four simple layers, nothing complex, with each layer dependent on the one above or below it. We offered four things to clients, consulting, strategy, output, and projects. For consulting, this includes working with organizations to offer them clarity on marketing dynamics, including training programs and workshops. Strategy includes creating digital marketing plans and identifying key channels of engagement. Output, that's the fun and cool stuff that you guys may see on social media, the cool videos, the infographics, the short second clips on reels, um, et cetera. And projects, this includes one-off one works that some clients may be required um, depending upon same sales cycle. So we kept it really, really simple. Four simple product offerings and four different layers. And before you know it, we were the go-to people for consulting, strategy, outputs, and projects. This, guys, is our brand spanking new corporate office. <clears throat> we moved in here just before the lockdown. We were on the first floor here, and, and we're surrounded by trendy cafes and open spaces, no longer looking at the kitchen, no longer looking at the bedroom. We now have a proper home. So where has five years gotten us? Today, we work with clients all over Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, 
Our clients range from service businesses to construction companies. Um, we look at pharma, aged care, everything in between. Mind you, on Google ads alone, so that's the stuff you guys see on Google on the top, you click on the ad. We deliver over 20 million impressions to our customers' businesses, and we delivered over 300,000 clicks. Conservatively speaking, 2019 alone, um, our clients made about $20 million worth of revenue purely based on the stuff that we did, and we're not taking into account any repeat business. Did someone say revenue? Here is a real world example of the sort of money our clients have made. This is a tracker. Um, and what this tracker is doing is carefully tracking the dollars spent versus the number of inquiries received. And if you look at this carefully from February to July, you will notice that the client had spent $88,000 808.84, so I'm rounding this to about $90,000. So $90,000 is what the client has spent. And the amount of inquiries we generated for them was 3,036, right? So I'm rounding this to 3K. To give you a summary, $90,000 spent and 3,000 inquiries received. Now here's where it gets really, really interesting. Given the client has got 3,000 inquiries, if 1% go through with the offer, this results in 30. So 1% of 3,030. Each customer that goes through pays $20,000 to our client initially and 2,000 per month thereafter. So 30 multiplied by 20K, 600,000 or 6 lakh dollars. So simple mathematics. If Ram gives Sham 90,000 and Sham returns to Ram 6 lakhs, how much is Ram's return on investment percentage? You know, the, the numbers are right there. Mind you, 1% is a conversion rate from inquiry to sale. The reality is that number is a lot higher. Right? So let that sink in for a moment. I have given you 90,000 and you made a return on investment 600,000 at 1%. And I'm telling you that number is a lot higher. So that's the sort of crazy money that we're making for our customers. Fair to say, um, although we made our customers very, very wealthy, we've done not too bad for ourselves as well. So our staff um, receive generous bonuses, uh, cash bonuses. Um, we award them with vehicles, mobile phones, not to mention flexi work hours. Um, we also encourage um, side projects. One of our team members is fulfilling his lifelong dream of becoming a pilot, um, all with the company support. So we're supporting him 100% for that. And guess what? We're just getting started. In June 2020, both me and my business partner, we bought matching houses. We did this using 100% of the revenue that we had generated from the business. We also bought matching Q5s. And this was a huge amount of validation for our company. And the reason why it was a very huge amount of validation is because no longer did we feel terrified, right? Our company, it was here to stay. And in that moment, I realized something very important. Um, something that I didn't fully understand at the beginning of this journey five years back. While we had no clients, no office, no staff, no startup money, um, no experience in doing business in Australia, we had one good idea just one, and that was enough to get started. All too often I meet people with ideas of businesses um, and they've got product ideas, they have service ideas, and they give me a laundry list of, of the reasons why they don't um, want to start a business. They say, I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't have the inclination, I have no experience, I have no business starting a business. What I'm sure to say is that forget all of that because one idea is enough for you to start one business. Had my wife not told me yes, and had that very first interview, Melendi not told me no, I wouldn't be sitting here today. I would not be able to build this company from an idea I had on Monday. So when you meet people with ideas, don't let fear hold you back. Don't get distracted. Why bother? Because you can create your own dream job based on just one idea. So thank you guys for listening to my story. I'm glad that I would have had, that I've got the opportunity to share a few stories from my journey. I'd like to conclude today's talk with a quote that I feel is apt. Go something like this. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. 
but people will never forget how you made them feel. And if today I've made all of you young people here feel inspired, feel happy, feel joyful, I feel that I've made a difference. Thank you again, everyone. God bless the Indian School Bahrain. Thank you, Safraz. It was a wonderful journey. And I hope everybody here enjoyed uh, like I did. I was receiving lots of uh, WhatsApp messages while you were chatting and lots of alumni as well clapping for you in the background. Some of them are not uh, yet muted, so they cannot uh, come on screen. But I, I can see them on screen. Uh, maybe you are spotting them as well. Are you? Yes, I can, I, I can see uh, quite a few familiar faces. Um, my screen will only allow so many faces, but it is so wonderful to see so many beautiful people in one screen. And some of them are uh, have not switched on their videos, so we cannot really spot them on. But uh, there are some alumni laughing as well with the headphones, uh, who have put <laughs> us together as well. I shouldn't forget their name. Manoj Nayak is one of them. Uh, he's 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 been the one person who has got us both on ISB alumni, and there are a lot of others. Manoj, you, you can spot our Sadagar sir as well. You are un, you are not mute. You are muted, I guess. Uh, technical host, if you can just unmute Manoj. He's one of the senior pros of Illumini as well. And we've lost his video. Yeah, let him reconnect. Uh, meanwhile, the question and answer session is open. And if anybody would like to ask a question and answer, Manoj, can you hear us? Can you speak? I can hear. Can you hear my voice? Yes, we can hear you. You can say a shout out a big hi to Sadagar sir. He's looking at you at the moment. Hello, sir. Yes. Thanks to this mental gentleman who got all of us together. Thank you, sir. It's lovely seeing you. God bless you. And for all those wonderful years that you shared with us, it makes a very nostalgic memory now and emotional as well. Meanwhile, anybody have any question to Mr. Sarfraz, you can uh, kindly raise your hand on the chat box or uh, you can uh, put on the participants by raising your hand so we can unmute and get you on screen. Mr. Sarfraz's mom, Madam Bilkis. She's I think she's mute. There. Still mute. Okay, sir. Okay, sir, you would like to say something? Uh, you know, our, 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 our pension is a real pension of life, is what our students have done for themselves and to make us proud. If we have contributed as teachers to their happiness and well-being, it's worth life spent. And more importantly, what better things to ask? A farmer has the best harvest when his crop does well. And each plant is a student. We may not recognize them individually, but our prayers and love and affection is always there. We have also the current chairman of Indian School, Mr. Prince Natarajan with us. He'll be a very happy person to see the ex-teachers as well as the alumni of Indian School. Uh, he's, he's a mastermind. See, uh, um, you see, well, mine also has been a sort of an entrepreneurship. I was a teacher for about uh, 12, 13 years. And when I made minimum money, I wanted to get out of the school and do something different. And uh, I was made a coordinator and I learned so much from the school that gave me the genesis to move forward. And uh, within two, three years, I became a principal, which is now a school affiliated to the IPSC. It's a residential school. And I thank uh, my parent uh, organization, the Indian School Bari, that gave me the impetus to look forward and to rise higher 
I was wanted to do something of my own like Sarfraz. So I moved away from teachership and ventured into heading a school. I put in 15 years of service and now my wife has taken over. When we transcend from one level of uh, efficiency to the higher up, there's a great amount of satisfaction, gratitude, and uh, I owe it to Indian School Bahrain for all the, the, the goodness that I received. I had an international cosmopolitan experience by going overseas and brought it back to India. And we are doing our best to, to grow a school in a rural area where uh, people are coming from a very illiterate background and we have a number of scholarships to bring up uh, students who are uh, incapable of being here in a boarding school. It costs more than a lakh a uh, year to be a student here, but we give 50 students free education and thanks to our mentor, Sri M.Y. Gorpale, who is not only a politician, but a statesman of caliber, who guided me to my tough times to make my school the ultimate, and I do. I have uh, met uh, ex principals of Indian School Bahrain, like M.B. Prasad, uh, in our conferences, and we do cherish uh, sweet times that we spend together. Thank you, sir. Uh, would Chairman like to say a few words, sir, for our ex teacher as well as alumni in this platform? Uh, yeah, definitely. Good afternoon, and uh, um, uh, once again, very happy to join the webinar of uh, PWA Group. And you people are doing a wonderful uh, work during this lockdown period, you know, uh, using, making use of this uh, time to definitely pass on messages, uh, important messages to the, to the public in general. Uh, and uh, generally, um, I'm very happy to see, I, actually, unfortunately, I, I was stuck up somewhere else. I couldn't join and hear the, the very useful uh, session. Uh, but uh, I know that, you know, the content is uh, very uh, apt and, you know, it's uh, timely, really. And thank you very much uh, for putting up these topics uh, in, in public and, uh, you know, uh, uh, making a platform to share knowledge. Uh, uh, definitely, it's uh, very hearty to see our uh, ex-teachers, the ex-leaders, let me call, you know, of Indian School Bahrain and as well as the, uh, the alumni uh, members. Definitely, it is... Uh, um, really hearty to see and uh, seeing, seeing them talking over this platform. It's really hearty to each and every one of the ISP fraternity. And uh, once again, thank you, uh, PWA Group, for uh, bringing. I, I, in fact, benefited from the last session you conducted. Uh, now also, I missed it. Probably you might have recorded and you'll be uh, posting it in either YouTube or some other channels. I'll be listening to that later. And uh, once again, wish you all the best and uh, keep up the good work. In uh, uh, let me call it propagating the, the right knowledge to the right people. Thank you very much. And uh, once again, thank you for all the support being extended to the Indian school. Uh, we are also going through a very tough time, very challenging time, in fact. And thank you for the support of each and every one, the PWA members, in our stride towards uh, um, excellence. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Very good to have you here. And even though for a few moments, it is uh, a privilege to have you here and honored. Thank you. Uh, I can see some question being raised, technical host. Uh, Salim, sir? Yes, please go ahead. You can uh, unmute them, please. Yes, yes, please. Your, your question, sir? Server. Yes, hello? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Hi, Server. How yeah. are you? Fine, sir. Fine. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. And uh, within short time, you have given so many clues. And uh, by this, uh, definitely, inshallah, we'll get some, uh, not some, we'll get a great uh, learning. Uh, since I'm also into the um, entrepreneurship started just a two and a half year before. So uh, I'm alone in this business. So I just want to your, uh, since you started with a partnership.
so where you uh, look into the pattern same uh, how it uh, works and being the same in the same field so the partnership is uh, giving uh, how it helping could you tell me something about the partnership sure so <clears throat> i can only speak from experience um a partnership is a bit like a marriage um it's actually more than a marriage um often me and my business partner um our wives complain to each other that you guys speak to one another more than you guys speak than you speak to us so um communication um, number one are uh, very very critical between partners so we have this internal system in which at the end of the day between 4 pm and 5 pm every day we talk and we might not really talk shop um we might not really talk business but sometimes we just talk and say um how's life uh, going on so i suppose to circle back to your question um one head is better than two and two heads are better than three you sort of got to find the right partnership that works um now here's a, here's a clue what we did before we actually jumped in and um started to you know make things final um we invited each other for dinner and lunch um and dinner and lunch again um just to see if if we could get along as as friends um if our wives spoke to each other um if we had things in common um and only when we figured out that we have some sort of chemistry some sort of bonding and of course that main element is there at the end um which is how do you make the most amount of money using the skills that you have so choosing a partner um i would say is is probably the best thing that's happened to me um because like they say you know if you want to go fast you go alone but if you want to go far you got to go with somebody else so i would highly recommend um always teaming up with people who've got similar energies as you similar skill sets um not necessarily in the same field like for example i am hardcore tech versus my partner is more business and operations so for example whenever we stand in front of a client and do our song and dance routine i usually handle the tech problems straight bam boom that's it in and out whereas my business partner he handles the 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 psychology the um the emotions that go behind the the presentations uh, the communication you know making sure uh, my business partner is also ozzy right so um, it is a great mix of um technical um collaboration between the two countries thank you uh, anand sir is uh, also vice principal of indian school of bahrain he's along with us anand sir would you like to say something few words please good afternoon everyone and it was a very wonderful and informative session and i am sure like you know you will be continuing with many more such sessions and it's very happy to see an alumni of isb on an international platform and speaking to everyone thank you and good job done thank you so first you like to say reply anything on that he is the current vice principal <laughs> um uh, well the school has made me um, what it has today it has shaped um the the way i interact with people the way i communicate the way i behave um is a culmination of all of those years that i spent in spent in school so um the principal the staff our school teachers everyone have got this small amount of dna encoded in my body so um thank you sir uh, for your kind comments um and most definitely we should also connect um on a one to one basis to to stay in touch um i would love to you know chat with you um, at some stage as well and um thank you definitely we'll be in touch and thanks a lot it was a wonderful session very informative thank you anand sir gaya yeah, sir your question uh, there are some questions you know raised by some of the students bahrain being a limited uh, uh, you know options for higher studies there are many students they look for overseas universities apart from india and there is a student asking a question about like how to uh, what are the best uh, you know countries to travel for uh, higher studies especially in australia uh, what are the best options there how they can migrate to australia for higher studies apart from entrepreneurship so um, the, the pathway to migration um there are a couple of ways to do it um one is after you finish your studies and you do your bachelors um and then you've got some of the work works that's looked very favorably when you apply to come and do a masters 
or after your graduation, you can come and do your uh, four year bachelor's course. Regardless, if you come through the bachelor's route or you do your master's route, um, Australia has got a lot of beautiful universities. I studied here myself. Um, and the, usually the pathway to migration is that after you finish your studies, um, the course that you do will award you a qualification. Now, it's a bit tricky because you have to choose a course which will be in demand four years after you finish your course. For example, if I have studied bachelor's in, um, if I've studied a master's degree and I have that in telecommunications, I have to predict in four years time that that skill, master's in telecommunication will still be valid four years down the line. And if it is still valid, then you definitely have a pathway um, to migrate and to apply for what they call as a permanent residency. So um, the first step, a lot of people do this, they come on a student visa, um, they get their education. Um, the important thing to remember is that when you come here to study, um, your primary focus should be to study um, and not um, you know, try to uh, do jobs on the other on the side and earn a lot of money and send that money back home and all of those sort of things. So when I first came here, my objective was to study. And after I studied, I went back to India. So you've got to really decide um, right at the beginning what you're coming here for. If the objective is migration, um, then you've got to choose a course which will be in demand four years down. If your objective is study, um, you have to choose this course um, which will give you the best chance of securing uh, a stable uh, job. But yes, um, coming as a student is, is definitely a great way to migrate here. Uh, next question, I think from Mr. Vikar, you can ask. Uh, thank you so much. I really impressed you start a story uh, from IMP till your success. I am really impressed. You started with your engineering five years, you make your company, you make local business. And uh, the good thing what I found in your story, all you made it awesome and you make your story, the picturized and visualization, uh, you're speaking and morally focusing on you. And uh, that means you are showing as how you succeeded. Similarly, similarly, we need to be, someone has to be pointed on you and to make uh, success how you made it. I really like it personally, what you share your stories. Mildly I have seen in my, someone who met and they shared the story in the public, no one has shared. What you have shared is uh, very amazing and it's very impressive those who really want to make their career to be successful. Now the question Thank is, you. Mind is this one, how you did the brainstorming, how you generate the ideas, how you make the story linking with your mission, how do you plan for your uh, short term and the long term, and what are your objectives? The main important thing, you shown all the success which is very, uh, as a positive way, that is very good. Now I would like to know what are the challenges we face? We reach up to, you mentioned six figure salary, people will inspire and they want to be achieve the same. So how we can get motivated by myself and for others as well. And the same story I will share with my other colleague or my children or my family. So just the thing what I want, you are very good and uh, you shared a story is really inspired. I request our host control or Mr. Sophie to share the story and not the least, uh, just I would like to say thank you for the effort which is doing by the PWA, Zayazullah Khan and uh, Sophie and uh, his team is really, we need more workshops similarly like that, it will be very inspiring to the individual. And the current situation, so many are, you know, they are downgrade themselves due to the situation. If that kind of uh, positive and the energy which showing to the others is really inspired. Thank you so much. And whatever the question I raise, if you can share about the challenges, it will be much better. Thank you. 
<clears throat> most definitely well, so first thank you for your kind words um, and for connecting with me um, when i gave the speech the thing is when you present to an audience um, you know you end up um, through through this modern media of communication of, of zoom and everything like that you know we end up um, sharing a common vision so all of us now on this call all 41 people are all sort of connected to the same fear and if i'm sending an idea from my brain it's creating a neural pattern in everyone's head so everyone is seeing the same thing that i am um, also talking about so that's fantastic C coming to your question right challenges now the reality is that nine out of ten businesses will fail um, and nine out of 10 people will not even try to start a business. So we're talking about a very small set of people um, who've been able to um, you know, try and do this for yourself. It's, uh, I'll, I'll, not be, I'll not lie, it is a tough job. Um, it's like riding a tiger. You cannot get off the tiger because it's always growth, 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 growth. So when you're working um, for a company, you have a defense behind you, right? So if I, if I fail, I have my boss or if, you know, if, if I don't do well, I know that I will be paid at the end of the month. For me, when I'm running my business, um, I am the defense. So there's no one behind me. So it's just, it's just us. So that means you have to be extra sure, extra careful. You have to read email, three, read each email three times before you send it to an important client. You cannot do grammatical mistakes in, a, um, uh, in, a, you know, in your communication. So to give you an idea of some of the challenges uh, we faced, before we landed our first customer, right, we were told no about 10 times. So we went to the first customer. He said, no, he, he, like I said, right. A lot of times they demanded that we left, that we leave their office. So I used to demand that I speak with the person in charge and they used to demand that I used to leave. So we took a lot of rejection, a lot of no's, a lot of no's, a lot of no's. And you know what, after the nine times you hear a no, you sort of get used to it. So, you know, as entrepreneurs, we sort of, we have really thick skin. And after a point, it, we sort of become friends with it. So the biggest challenge that we faced was growth uh, in the initial years. Like we, we wanted somebody to trust a new company who had no market experience at all. Um, we also, the biggest, uh, one of the second biggest challenges we faced was money, right? None of it. So, um, when me and my business partner started, we left with one with one month salary. We had savings, sure, but we did not want to touch it. So we said, for all intents and purposes, our business is zero. Like we have no money. So we made a big Excel spreadsheet of the things that we wanted, and in that included uniforms. So we want to have uniforms with with a logo on it. We could not afford it, so we had to cut it. No uniforms. We wanted to buy new computers couldn't afford it. Just use the equipment that you have in your house. You want to buy company phones. We said, no, just use the ones um, that you have, you know, things like that. So we had no money uh, when we started. Um, so when, the thing is when you're faced with a, with a situation like that, you, you start to improvise. So you have no money. What do you do? Right. You start to hustle. You call, you call up your previous bosses. You call up all of the businesses in the area. You do letterbox drops. You go and demand to speak to people in charge. So just two of the biggest challenges when you first started. I hope that I was able to sort of answer your question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is the challenge uh, everyone will face. And you have shown, and I really like it, the person you are very open-minded and sharing others to get knowledge and see the experience. I hope uh, you have done maybe the MBA. I am not sure, but uh, the type of properly, if you have from the beginning, as you said, you have an idea, you have some vision, you need to generate something and you want to make for yourself first as a job which is uh, inspiring you to uh, reach in this level. So I can say this one and uh, thank you so much for uh, really sharing your personal story. Uh, I, I am recommending for you, it's applicable to you, you write the book. Maybe it will be very good for uh, others, you know, not for now. Maybe the coming generation, when they read your story, you know, I read a lot of books. 
and there also i found those who have success in their life personal story when they share no it will be very effective we take <clears throat> thank you bikar much love to you manoj i think you wanted to share something with uh, safraz how to make double your money or something like that <laughs> no no I, i don't want to share anything but i would like to you know uh, thank for safraz being the same person we had met maybe last 20 years back and you know hats off to his uh, intuition hats off to his uh, risk taking ability and hats off to you know listening to his heart for you know starting his own business i know i know that uh, you know you he has uh, ventured into few few businesses few jobs as well so that that's very great of him to you know think of his heart and listen to his heart and you know end up what he's doing now great thank you manoj much love to you man cheers cheers uh, now i will invite uh, the chairman to please do the honors and uh, pass on the sort of certificate and gratitude to our guest speaker uh thank you tawfik uh once again mr sarfar saudagar uh, it's a proud moment for all the fraternity the entire fraternity of the indian school bahrain to see see an alumnus uh, you know coming and performing uh, sharing his knowledge you know uh, especially about uh, entrepreneurship a lot of thank people you. will be definitely benefiting from your talk and uh, let me read out the citation given in the certificate of appreciation given by the parents welfare association kingdom of bahrain certificate of, of appreciation is awarded to mr sarfaraz saudagar for conducting successful webinar on entrepreneurship parents welfare association signed by the pwa president on 21st august 2020 Once again, thank you, Mr. Sarfaraz, and uh, well done uh, for the you know for this uh, for this well done, uh, well conducted webinar. Thank you. Thank and, you. And uh, on behalf of each and every one, especially the PWA leadership, it's my honor to hand over this certificate to Mr. Sarfaraz. <clears throat> thank you very much for for the honor, and uh, it is my pleasure to be able to give back to the school that has made me. Thank you, Mr. Sarfaraz. All the best in your future and all your future endeavors. Thank you. And definitely, you. we will try to organize something which will be benefiting our students also in the near future. Inshallah. Please cooperate. Inshallah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sir. Over to, you. over to you, Mr. Taufik. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, just for others' thank information. under his chairmanship indian school achieved a excellent academic uh, result for consecutive years and one of the best in ireland and we congratulate all the academic team especially alan sar who are higher uh, vice principal for higher classes and uh, thank you very much uh, for participating today uh, uh, chairman sir and uh, anan sir and other indian school uh, teachers who are uh, on board uh, and my personal gratitude on behalf of uh, pwa to our guest speaker mr uh, sarfraz saudagar all the way from australia thank you very much very much insight uh, story of yours we are very much con concentrated on uh, the talk while you are speaking and uh, my special thanks to both the senior saudagars the parents of uh, mr uh, uh, sarfraz saudagar who are patiently listening us for more than a hour they came earlier both madam balkis and saudagar sir thank you very much and i also see sister feroz uh, from uk thank you very much for all the time here and asif saudagar uh, brother thank you for your uh, being here mr manoj uh, you are you know i was see is i was i seen you that you know smiling all the way all the time uh, during the speech i know you are connect with uh, your fellow st um, colleagues and also my special thanks uh, to our host tawfiq and the technical host anwar salim the entire pwa team and all the participant th those who here out those who did not get chance to ask any questions or any queries if they still have they can uh, ask us later and uh, thank you very much 
to one and all thank you thank you thank you bye 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 thank you bye 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 bye